This is the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing, but I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. The gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Let us pray. Lord, help us realize that you want to be friends with us. Guide us toward a real relationship with you and not a superficial one. Help us be brutally honest with you and show our true selves to you always. Amen. So I I wanted to sing a song today. (laughs) And I'll do it very timidly so I don't project too badly. (laughs) Because I know COVID still, but I'm vaccinated. it'll It'll be okay. Uh, But (laughs) you may want to sing along, but you can hum it. (laughs) Uh, You might have heard this one. It goes like this. You've got a friend in me. You've got a friend in me. You got troubles. I've got them too. There isn't anything I wouldn't do for you. We stick together and see it through. Yeah, you got a friend in me. Yeah, you got a friend in me. Anybody? Anybody know that one? <laughs> Raise a hand. No? Oh, man. Got to catch up on our Disney movies. <laughs> well, that's from Toy Story. Have you ever heard of Andy and Woody? All right, there we go. <laughs> well, if you don't know, the background of the story of Toy Story is Andy is the human boy who has this toy, Woody, and Andy chose Woody. And he, as most children do, confide in an inanimate object. I know for me, it was this giant bear. (laughs) And I'm sure we all had something, or maybe an an imaginary friend. But we have those, those things that don't really talk back to us as children. But we love them none the same. But that's not really important to the story. (laughs) That just gives you a gist of what Toy Story is about. What is important and what stuck out to me is that Andy chose Woody to be his favorite toy and imprinted his name on the bottom of Woody's boot. (laughs) And And he chose Woody and loved Woody deeply, and in return, Woody loved Andy, but only we knew that. But the correlation here between Disney's Toy Story and our gospel today is that in both cases, a more powerful entity chose a less powerful entity, loved them, and called them friend. Woody didn't choose Andy. He couldn't. He was a toy, someone whose whole purpose in life was to bring joy to children. And it was never in the nature of the toy to choose their own owner. That was the child's job, the human's job. And then Andy chose Woody and called him his own and put his name on his boot. I couldn't help but see just how relatable this is to our relationship with God. If Andy never showed up to the toy, story, toy store, 
Woody would have stayed in his packaging until another one, another child would have came along, or maybe no one ever wanted him. He would not have been capable of choosing his own friend on his own. But because Andy desired friendship, he chose Woody. Andy chose Woody to be his friend because Andy wanted to share love with something. And the interesting part is, is that Andy never knew that Woody could talk and move. He never knew the adventures that they went on. He never knew how jealous Woody was when Andy got new friends. And yet Andy still, time and time again, chose Woody to be his friend, even if he never knew the love that Woody had for him. And I truly believe that is a great example for how God's love is toward us. In our case, God does know everything and knows everything we do and don't do and the like. But God loves us even though we may not choose to love God. And better yet, God takes that love one step uh, forward and says, you're my friend. Even if maybe you don't choose to be my friend. And speaking of what we do for our friends, I like what, uh, how many of you have heard of Dietrich Bonhoeffer before? (laughs) Very famous German. (laughs) And he says in his book about Christian ethics, he writes, And I quote, in line with New Testament statements about God becoming flesh in Christ, it expresses just this, that in the body of Christ, all humanity is accepted, included, and born, and that the church community of believers is to make this known to the world by word and life. This means not being separated from the world, but calling the world into the community, Gemeinschaft of the body of Christ to which the world in truth already belongs, end quote. Bonhoeffer is trying to remind us that through Christ, this world is accepted, that there there isn't an in-group and an out-group, that all of humanity now lives in this body of Christ. The one downside, I believe, and others have mentioned, it's not unique to me, is that he never really, Bonhoeffer never really goes the next step. He says we're accepted, but he never says that we're with God, that we're friends with God. He kind of talks about it in a roundabout way, but I think his argument falls short by never actually mentioning it by name. I agree that this world is accepted, but I believe that we are truly accepted because God considers us friends. Breaking that dynamic of toy and human of God in person. Because the ultimate goal of this world, the creation of the universe, was to share in the relationship that God already had in God's self. God wanted more love. God wanted to share more of what God was already experiencing. That's why we were created in the first place. We see it in Genesis, where God willingly walked in the garden with Adam and Eve and called them God's friends. But then, it wasn't until Adam and Eve ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil that they stopped being friends with God. They were the ones who started to fear God and started to see the separation. And ever since then, God has been trying through every generation to bring us back to that realization. God wants to be friends with us. And it was through Jesus that God had made the ultimate plea for friendship by laying down God's life for God's friends as we hear in the gospel today. Jesus is God's attempt to show us just how much God cares for us. Jesus was God's attempt to walk among us just like God did in the garden. Jesus was God's way of showing us God's true intentions with us. To be our friend, to walk among us, to be with us. And in Toy Story, as I mentioned before, Andy put his name on the underside of Woody's boot. A location that isn't easily noticed, but a location that is permanent. He put it in permanent marker. And this is how I felt like it is with us and God. God wrote God's name on us, chose us as God's own, but it isn't so easily noticed. But that's why we have the church, in my opinion. That's why we're all here, to show 
the world that God's name is on their hearts, that God's name is written on their soul. In all the serious talk, did you catch the pun? No. Soul, yeah! (laughs) Uh, Good stuff. Okay, anyway, God wants us to be friends. That's the point. (laughs) It's the church's job to show the world of what it means to be God's friend. And then for us to be friends, to mimic that friendship. And as baptized Christians, we make a public acknowledgement of the name that we see on our own souls. We proclaim that we understand we are accepted by God and the friends of God. And therefore, we are tasked to be friends with all people, and I mean all people. So let us always remember to be kind to one another, to show grace to one another, to live for each other, and to work toward friendship with everyone we meet. I know this is not hard. There are people in my life who I don't really want to be friends with. (laughs) But we got to work towards it. That's the goal. And through the help of Christ, we can create this idealistic church community that we strive for, that embodies the spirit of Christ's extreme interconnectedness with us through our love for one another and the world. And let us always remember that you got a friend in me. (laughs) You got a friend in me. You got troubles. Jesus got them too. There isn't anything that God wouldn't do for you. We stick together and see it through. Yeah, you've got a friend in me, and you've got a friend in God. Amen.